Apparently the folks at the uh, at Chinese production facility telling two stories, one to the 60 Minutes folks and another to everybody else about whether there's formaldehyde in this. Tom, to you, you're a building expert. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how common is it to have formaldehyde in building products? Well, it's extremely common. I mean, formaldehyde exists in thousands of materials in our homes and in, in materials that we interact with. Everything from our clothing to our kitchen cabinets to our carpet to our furniture has formaldehyde as part of the manufacturing process. And Dr. Mitch, I have to tell you though, this, these levels are six to seven times above what California considers safe. What is the health risk here? Well, the health risk to formaldehyde, especially in chemically sensitive people, or watery eyes, sore throat, it can exacerbate asthma, and it is classified as a carcinogen, meaning it can cause cancer at uh, prolonged or high levels. Uh, so it's concerning. So would living with this flooring constitute prolonged exposure? It depends. I think if people get the facts, it's important uh, you can measure the formaldehyde level in your house with a number of different types of kits. So before I'd panic, I'd want to know what the formaldehyde levels were. If they're high, you can remediate it by increasing ventilation, getting an air filter, things like that. I want to uh, read a response from Lumber Liquidators, the company that's been selling these products. Here's what they say. We believe that 60 Minutes used an improper test method in its reporting that is not included in CARB's regulations, that's the California regulations, and does not measure a product according to how it is actually used by consumers. Our laminate floors are completely safe to be used as intended. Denny, w w how do you respond to that? Well, that's just not accurate. You know, we are very aware that lumber liquidators and, and composite flooring manufacturers have long not liked the California regulation that underpins this testing method. They commented as such during the comment period. Mm. They lost that battle. Peer-reviewed studies threw that idea out the window. Then when this testing method that we used and followed, the CARB method, not something we thought up, you can go to the CARB website and read it. It's there. Uh, now, I understand know. that this particular uh, uh, level set by California is going to go national soon. So it's not just yeah, I mean, California. That, yeah, no, I right. mean, this is a really big part of it. It's an important part of it because we're suing under special California provisions of Proposition 65. The consumer outside California doesn't have that protection. But if you can imagine, and this is something you probably, I hope you're sitting down, Congress actually passed legislation to put the California standard national. That's okay. how much consensus there is on this, Tom, and that's, uh, we hope EPA moves. It's been sitting there for three years. All right. I want to get to Tom for a second, because this reminds me of another scenario. <laughs> this reminds me a lot of Chinese drywall at the beginning of 2000s. This that's is, right. Mm -hmm. I, was, I went to homes in Florida yeah. that had this drywall that had been made in China that was substandard. I mean, it was no joke. This stuff, it corroded uh, copper throughout the homes. Air conditioning systems, jewelry, electronics. It. Is this another example of this? Well, look, there's many manufacturers that uh, manufacture overseas. You know, you need to do strong oversight. And I think what Lumber Liquidators has said is they're certainly going to look into, the, look into their oversight to make sure it's where it needs to be. But they've reported to me that this only impacted 15% of the flooring they sold. Yeah, this is a, a small but important part of, of what they sell. Uh, Doc, to you, there are tests you can do in your own home. Is that really going to tell you what you need to know? It will, actually. Uh, you can measure what are called VOCs, or volatile organic chemicals. Formaldehyde is one of them. If you need to, you can even test your flooring. Uh, but it may be coming from somewhere else, like carpet or a new couch. And Jenny, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, because if you have just hang one of those formaldehyde passes in your house, it just tells you there's formaldehyde, and it's just noted it's in all kinds of products. So really, the only way to do it is to look at the official CARB test, which measures a lifetime of exposure, right. not just when you hang the badge yeah, I, and follow I don't, the law. I don't know that the average person in New Jersey can go out and get a CARB test, though, can they? It's a, it's a thousand bucks. That's a lot of money. And That's that air a lot sample of money. test is a hundred bucks. And so, if you want to do just a baseline screening to see what your exposure is, what you're breathing, you do the that air sample give test, you a false, and you can yeah, take it from that there. Could give, that could be a, yeah, that could be a it, false negative. It may not negative. be enough information. My big question, it, no, though, no, Doc, to you no. is, you know, look. What if I have an eight-month-old at home? What if I have a baby, a small child, an elderly parent that's living with with me? Are they more at risk than, say, I am? 
Uh, the elderly parent, probably not, but the eight-month-old, definitely. Uh, children are less able to detoxify, and the carcinogens are more concentrated because of their low body weight. So that is more concerning, of course. All right. I I'm going to wrap it here. This is a fascinating story. I'm sure we'll be back to it, talk more about this issue. Denny, thanks for coming on. Tom, good to see you. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Gaynor, a pleasure meeting you. Thanks so much for the help tonight, fellas.